but big tech leading it off with NVIDIA. Let's break down some of these numbers here, Kev. Even though we've had two days of weakness, stock's still up 1.1% for the week, up 117% this year, uh, up 184% from year ago levels. Last May on that earnings call when they saw that big jump in revenue based on their new AI, uh, AI chip, that sent the stock to record highs just two days ago. I mean, you can't discount what they've done because they're the picks and shovels of AI. They're the ones that are profiting from it, and they keep on up in guidance and knocking the ball out of the park. The current day good news is everywhere. It's overwhelming how much good news they have. So why is the stock struggling up here mm -hmm. and ahead of a stock split? Why is it struggling? Well, how about these stats, Tom? In their data center, in their data center revenue, right? 40% of that data center revenue was AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, right? Data center revenue is 85% of their total revenue. Who's their number one competition back trying to build their own chips? Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Meta, AMD. Apple's in there probably too. And, yeah. and the question everyone has to ask is, how many of these companies overbought chips and pulled forward demand? There's the question. If that starts to wane and the overall momentum in order starts to fade, yeah. uh-oh. AWS said uh, they upped their uh, CapEx spend to $14 billion last quarter. They said that's going to be the lowest of the year. So they're yeah. going to keep investing. The good stories are out there. Yep. Despite the recent pullback experienced by many tech names, including NVIDIA stock, there are still many positives surrounding NVIDIA, and its CEO, Jensen Huang, proved that. On Sunday, Huang unveiled NVIDIA's next generation of AI chips, which will succeed Blackwell. And the best thing about this is that Blackwell isn't even out, and yet NVIDIA is solidifying its position as the market leader with an even more advanced chip. In today's video, we're going to discuss this massive announcement, as well as other key points from Huang's Computex keynote. Additionally, we'll talk about whether this pullback is a buying opportunity for NVIDIA stock. But first, if you want to keep up with NVIDIA's latest updates and keep up with the stock market's latest news, you can follow our Twitter account. We post multiple times daily about the biggest changes and catalysts in the market, so click the follow button if you don't want to miss the newest market updates. Now, back to today's video. Let's bring back in Joe. Uh, give me your take here on this stock, Joe. I, I get it. I get it why the stock's rallying to all-time highs. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. earnings continue to beat. The valuation's actually going down here a, a little bit because yeah. their sales are so strong. Uh, but there's a, a little bit of cracks here and maybe competition coming down the road. I haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about some fundamentals and valuations. I mean, look, you're, you're looking at a company with net profit margins of an astounding 55%. That's not gross. That's net, right? So they, I mean, these are these are just, they're crushing it in terms of, the growth, uh, you know, you're looking at a forward PE, as, as you said, Tom, it's growing into its multiple. It's around 40, 40 times. I mean, that's when you're getting that type of a, a margin expansion and you're only paying 40 times forward, I think. And, and you look at that from, um, you know, the expected growth, maybe even a peg ratio, 1.4. Uh, which, when you compare that with other companies within the tax space, uh, you know it's, it's once again I'm going to use that word astounding in terms of uh, you know their relative valuation to the growth. Now the key is, and I think this is what you and Kevin were talking about: does that growth continue? Well, expectations for Q2 are still really high, uh, so you know that, that growth is is kind of built into uh, the guidance for Q2, but. You know, at some point, you know, when does this thing start to consolidate a little bit with the overall market? Because even though it's, you know, it's been a standalone and up 40 percent over the course of this month, you know, what catapulted it to that to those levels when that was very favorable earnings and guidance? And what are we going to have to wait for another three months will be, you know, potentially favorable earnings and guidance. So, you know, what is going to be that catalyst to push it to all time highs? Uh, we'll have to see, because at some point, you know, this this stock represents you know, four or five percent of the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. So if the S&P 500 rolls over, this thing's going to have to roll over, too. 
And I think that's just uh, kind of what we're seeing right now. I don't think this is an indictment specifically on NVIDIA. It's more of just the, the fact that it's it, it represents such a, a heavy market cap or a heavy weight in the S&P 500 based upon its market cap. The new AI chip architecture, dubbed Robin, was announced ahead of the Computex Tech Conference in Taiwan, and the announcement comes months after Blackwell was revealed in March. Keep in mind that Blackwell is still in production and expected to ship to customers later in 2024. So, Huang's announcement of Rubin appears to quicken the company's already accelerated pace of AI chip advancement. Jensen Huang said that the company plans on releasing new AI chip models on a one-year rhythm, even though the company had previously been operating on a slower two-year update timeline for chips. To sum up, the turnaround from Blackwell to Rubin was a matter of less than three months, underscoring the competitive frenzy in the AI chip market and NVIDIA's sprint to preserve its dominant spot. Two of the major competitors that are trying to catch up with NVIDIA are AMD and Intel, though their gross margins trailed NVIDIA's in the most recent quarter. On the other hand, companies like Google, Amazon, and Microsoft are also vying for NVIDIA's top spot, despite simultaneously being some of NVIDIA's biggest customers. Regardless, the Rubin chip platform will have new GPUs, the crucial graphic processing technology that helps train and launch AI systems. It will also come with other new features like a central processor called Vera, though the Sunday announcement did not provide many details. But that's not everything, as Huang was seen before his keynote with some of the biggest names in the chip-making business, leading many investors to wonder about what this means for NVIDIA, and we're going to explore that now. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Investocracy. TSMC founder Morris Chung, MediaTek CEO Rick Tsai, Quanta head Barry Lam, and renowned architect Chris Yeo were spotted with Huang in Taiwan, and the group were mobbed by fans and the media in this rare public outing. The entire chip industry is eager to know what the group talked about. Maybe NVIDIA is planning to establish a second R&D center in Taiwan, or working with MediaTek and Intel to build ARM-based CPUs for mobile computing. Of course, it could have been just a pleasant evening for harried executives, but this won't stop us from speculating. We think that the meeting had to do with NVIDIA building a facility in the country, as the group included Chris Yao, one of Taiwan's leading architects. This is very interesting, because Yao has designed three TSMC facilities and the impressive Quanta R and D Center, so maybe Huang discussed building a new NVIDIA facility in Taiwan with Yao. And this came after rumors that NVIDIA is considering a second R and D Center in Taiwan started going around, two years after opening its first Asian AI R and D Center in the country. Additionally, TSMC's input would be critical to this project, so the company's founder being pressed is no surprise. NVIDIA's decision to establish its R and D centers in Taiwan is no random move, but a tactical masterstroke by the company. This is because the Taiwan government is keen on maintaining the country's huge market share of the global semiconductor market, as the country has around 60% of the market, so it'll always support semiconductor companies operating inside it. And the perfect example for this is the country giving NVIDIA a $205 million subsidy to encourage it to build its first center in the country. Having a strong foothold in Taiwan is also hugely beneficial to NVIDIA, as it would bring the company closer to its closest partner and supplier, TSMC, as well as amazing talent with a lot of expertise when it comes to semiconductor chips. Additionally, according to a report by Tom's Hardware, the meeting lends some credibility to reports that NVIDIA is working with MediaTek and Intel to build ARM-based CPUs for mobile computing, and it would actually be a really good move to have Quanta in the mix if that were to materialize. This is because Quanta provides data centers and storage systems, in addition to network services, technical services, and cloud services. NVIDIA operates in all of these sectors, so there's a strong synergy between the two companies. Additionally, Quanta already works with NVIDIA to build AI servers, so an expansion of this partnership seems very likely. Still, the group might have also discussed the Rubin announcement Quine made at the Expo, but what's certain is that this public spectacle could be a sign of things to come for NVIDIA. After all, informal deals made over the dinner table between heads of big companies could be just as binding, if not more so, than official announcements. 
but aside from Han, Lisa Su of AMD and Qualcomm boss Cristiano Emmon are also scheduled to deliver keynote speeches at Computex. Su is expected to outline AMD's plans to compete in cutting-edge AI, while Emmon will showcase the AI-accelerated experiences users can expect from their next-generation PCs, according to the organizers. Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger and Reen Haas, head of the British chip design giant Arm, will also speak at the event. So, this is an event that no investor in chip companies wants to miss. If you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make, so if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow. That said, back to the video. Yep, uh, backlog of orders, free cash flow increased over 30 billion uh, last quarter. Free cash flow climbed over 400% during uh, Q1, 14.93 mm -hmm. billion. Uh, compared to 2.64 billion in the comparative quarter a year ago. So, and don't forget XAI. Yeah. That's just th this week another demand builder because they're not going to build their own in-house chips. So XAI is going to be buying Nvidia chips. So yep. more demand, and they raised six billion dollars this week. So. Yeah, it's a, a capex machine right, right now. Spend mm -hmm. uh, on tech at this point. NVIDIA's latest earnings report gave investors a lot of optimism as the company didn't disappoint. The company crushed Wall Street's expectations and issued terrific guidance for the current quarter. The health of the AI market was a big reason why investors were waiting with bated breath for NVIDIA's results. There have been concerns that NVIDIA stock could be in a bubble and that the company might not be able to sustain its outstanding growth thanks to increasing competition and a pullback in AI infrastructure spending. After all, NVIDIA has been the prime beneficiary of the proliferation of AI as its chips have played a central role in helping train AI models such as ChatGPT and form the backbone of the AI services offered by major tech giants. The semiconductor specialist's results cement the fact that AI is not just hype, which is why its customers are pouring billions of dollars into its hardware. Investors who have been skeptical about NVIDIA's AI-driven future and didn't buy any shares are now wondering whether they missed out on the stock's red-hot rally. So, let's get into it right now and determine whether it's too late to buy NVIDIA stock after it soared a stunning 628% since the beginning of 2023. First of all, NVIDIA stock is currently trading at 62 times trailing earnings, which is a discount to its 5-year average earnings multiple of 67. There is no doubt that the stock is richly valued compared to the US technology sector's average of 42, but the pace at which it is growing justifies its valuation. NVIDIA's bottom-line growth has simply taken off in the past year, allowing it to justify its price-to-earnings ratio. Additionally, NVIDIA's forward earnings multiple of 43 points toward more growth in the company's bottom line. That's not surprising considering how rapidly NVIDIA's data center business is forecast to grow in 2025. Investors, therefore, can still consider buying more shares of NVIDIA as the booming demand for AI chips and the company's dominant position in this space could send this AI stock even higher. But what do you think about NVIDIA stock? Is it a buy at the current price? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And don't forget to tell us what your valuation for NVIDIA is. If you would like to know what companies like NVIDIA have been up to these past few days, go ahead and click on the next video on your screen. See you there.